Today's story, again, features Jesus. And three things to remember. First, um, things are not always in scale. So, you'll see a boat under here that's pretty small, but yet it would have held all the disciples. So, we don't worry about size in these, you just use your imagination. The second thing to remember is that there's no face on our puppets, so you can imagine your Jesus on that face, and probably he looks different than my vision of Jesus. And the last thing is that we invite our stories in with a song. Bible, Bible, tell your story, speak to us about God's glory. There's so much we need to know. Tell us how God loves us so. In this story, Jesus has picked up from last week. He's been doing miracles. He's also been arguing with people called the Pharisees. Now these are the um, official Jewish heads of the church and his teachings turn out to be very different from theirs. So he goes in often and he speaks what he says and then they counter with questions trying to trick him and trap him into showing that somehow he's not the Son of God. This has been going on for a little while, and once again, Jesus is tired. Um, the name of this story, by the way, is, it's the story of Jesus and the Syrophoenician woman. Now that's in our Mark version. In the Matthew version today, she's a Canaanite woman. It's the same woman. So if I get confused, you know, just roll them together. They're the same woman, either the Syrophoenician or the Canaanite. Jesus is with his disciples, and they are weary, and they decide to head north, up into country that they, don't, they haven't spent much time in, country where they won't be known, perhaps to rest, perhaps to get away, but off they go. Jesus and, of course, his disciples, all 12 of them traipsing along behind him like they do. Sometimes they must go ahead and look for food or lag behind and talk with people, but Mostly they're with him if they can be because they understand how important he is going to be in their lives and how much he has to teach them. They go up north, a little closer to the ocean or to the coast, to lands called Tyre or Sidon, where those are the cities there. Up they go, and as they near this new foreign territory, they're getting into a country where they're not very popular. The Canaanites and the people from Jesus' area don't like each other. They are, they've been enemies for a long time. In fact, they tend to call one another dogs. Not nice dogs, not sweet little puppy dogs, but dog dogs, bad, nasty, biting dogs. It's a real insult to be called a dog, and these two people do it to each other all the time. Well, they're staying up here up away from everyone and a woman begins to follow them and she not only follows them she starts yelling at them Jesus Jesus she yells obviously a different sort of person a Canaanite woman or a Syrophoenician she starts yelling, Jesus, Jesus, you must help me. Jesus, Jesus, help me. You must heal my daughter. Jesus, Jesus, my little daughter is tormented by a devil. And Jesus says nothing. He doesn't turn to help her. He ignores her. And his disciples say, oh, oh, um, can't we just make her go away? Can't we just get her to leave? Send her away. She just keeps shouting at us and bothering us. You can imagine, maybe for a second, you'd like to pretend you're her, and what would you say if you were she? 
What would you yell to try and get his attention? Well, whatever it is, doesn't work. He keeps going, and the disciples are just fine, and they want him to just sort of find a way to quiet her. And then she comes up, and she kneels before him. We'll take Jesus into some high ground here. Put him at a table. And his disciples are railing. Don't listen to her. She's just a crazy Canaanite. They're all crazy in Cana. She kneels before him and she says, Lord, help me. He answers, It's not fair to take food from the children's table and throw it to the dogs. Now when he talks about his children's table, he's saying his tribe, his people, that's who he was sent to save, not other people, just his Israelites. And she says, yes, Lord, but even dogs eat the crumbs from under the master's table. So the children eat, but so do the dogs. And he answers her, Woman, so great is your faith. So great. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her little daughter, who spent her life tormented by demons, was healed. What's our takeaway this week? What's, what's the point of this story? We could go two ways with it. Last week, with Peter in the boat, Peter said, Lord, help me. Same words. And Jesus tries to help him, but poor Peter, he thinks his faith is not great enough. This week, the Syrophoenician woman's faith is huge. She knows. He can heal her daughter if only she can get his attention. And he does it from afar. Notice this week we find out he doesn't have to be touching the bread or the fishes to make the miracles happen. He can do it from afar. It is so. It is so. So maybe he was just showing those disciples what great faith can do. Or maybe in this lesson we see Jesus learning something from the Syrophoenician woman. Maybe the lesson is hers this time, hers to give and his to receive. It doesn't matter which way that goes. What does matter is the lesson itself. And that is, when you judge someone, don't judge them with what your eyes see. Don't judge them with what your friends say. Don't judge them with what the prejudices or the history of your thoughts tell you. Judge them with your heart, where they too are beloved of God. Bible, Bible, tell your story, speak to us about God's glory. There's so much we need to know. Tell us how God loves us so.